Now you're you were making me sweat it out today is what I did yesterday. <laughs> huh? Uh, I knew you were going to yell at me for being here at 831. I had to run in. I was doing talking baseball out in my, uh, my studio. Oh, okay. Right. It is Wednesday. My bad. My no, bad. You're good. You're I'm good, man. You. How are you, Chris? I am doing great. And people are getting on me for wearing my Browns lid, even though it's a baseball, you know, primarily a baseball network. I'm good with that, right? I would never wear a Browns hat, but hey, that's... This why, is... why not? You don't want to get on the bandwagon now? Before we <laughs> no, go? you know, I'm a, I'm a Seahawk guy. Oh, okay. I didn't. I was going to ask you. I didn't know because you know there was no football here for a while. Exactly. There's a whole generation of people my age that didn't have a football team. So Seahawks, wow. it is for me. I love going up to Seattle. I catch. A, I try to catch a game uh, every year. Oh, good. I will say this, and then and then we'll move on to uh, what we want to talk about baseball wise. Football. The, the, one of the many things I love about baseball is that every stadium is different. Right, mm -hmm. the landscape, where it sits in the city, how it looks at the downtown skyline, all sorts of stuff. Football stadiums are very much the same. They've gotten yeah. a little bit better with the Jones Mahal down in Texas and what has happened at SoFi Stadium here in L.A. and all sorts of stuff. Seattle is entirely different. It's a different football experience, right? Yeah, you know, to be honest with you, I haven't been to too many places other than there. I've been to down in San Diego when the Chargers are there. I've been to the new Chargers or well, – the Carson Center before they moved to SoFi. Yeah, right. That was a cool place to watch. Uh, which was games. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. But, yeah, Seattle's different. It's just it's just like a community up there. When you're going to a game, like the whole – the entire downtown city is ready for that game. That's that. That's what it, it almost feels like. When I watch, like, Texas high school football movies, like that, how the town shuts down, yeah. I feel like that's what Seattle does also on Sundays. All right. We've got a lot of people uh, anxiously awaiting what you – are thinking about baseball wise, so let's get to it. Dodgers swept on the north side of Chicago yesterday. Kershaw got beat, whooped up in game one. Bauer did okay, and then we went extra innings in game two. So the champs have lost 12 of their last 16 after a 13 and two start. Are you worried? Not not one bit at all. You know, they, you said they started out 13 and two. Obviously, that's not sustainable. There was going to be some regression there. If you go look it over, overall numbers like they're still fine hitting they're still fine pitching i'm not worried it's just a little bit of a lull for them i think when we i mean obviously i think you're going to agree with this as well when we look back in september and see where they're at we're like okay that was just a little blip on the radar i'll tell you what i, I here's what i'm worried about a little bit i'm not worried okay. about the lineup because with the exception of turner they haven't hit and i, I think they will and the starting pitching has been outstanding Yes. Kershaw had his shortest regular season outing ever yesterday, but I'm still not worried about that, even with the Dustin May injury. The bullpen scares me a little bit. It really does, because they've got too many hurt arms. Gonsolin, who I imagine will come back as a starter, is probably a month away. David Price is at least a month and a half, it sounds like, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, Knable just got put on the 60-day. So you're putting a lot of guys in high-leverage situations, like we saw last night. They had already burned Jansen. And so now they're in the eighth inning of a seven-inning doubleheader. So that's extra innings, even though it's still the eighth inning. So my mind was kind of blown anyway. They're using this guy, White, who just, that's not his normal role. And so you're relying on guys to get big-time outs. And they, they don't have a great record in one-run games. I think they're one in five in extra innings this year. Those will pile up, Kloof. I just don't think they're going to continue to have that record in one-run games. That's true. You know, so I, I just think that this is just a bad stretch for them. Uh, they're still sitting, what, three or four games over 500 on the year because of that impressive start. And they yeah. do have the arms. I think that the Dave, I'm mentioning Dave, um, or I mean Dave Roberts, needs to figure out just kind of the formula back hey, there. And that's the toughest Dave. part if of being a manager right now. If you guys now. are that close, you can just call him Dave. I'm not that close with him. Okay. I wish I was. I think he's a great – everybody says he's a great guy. Uh, but But that formula to, you know – to picking your relievers and putting them in good positions and resting them when they need to be rested and, and staying with them when you need to stay with them. That's the hardest part of being a manager right now in today's game. So like they just have to figure that out. But you know, to your original question, I'm not worried about the Dodgers. Okay. Though. I guess big picture. I'm not, I am keeping my eye on the bullpen. And the one other thing we've learned about this is everybody's like, Oh dude, they're going to win 120 games after the 13 two starters. Like, 
Slow your roll. It's hard. I think they still went over 100 games. And, you know, even you're talking about the bullpen. Jansen sitting with a 219, trying near the 27, uh, Jimmy yes. Nelson 3 4, Scott Alexander 2 3, and Victor Gonzalez, last year's postseason hero, 1.86. Yes. They're still doing it. It's just finding that formula. Yeah, but Nelson's a guy who's, who might, he and Santana might have to end up sharing that fifth role, you know, that five spot in the sure. rotation. So it's just things are getting moved around. That's all. Yeah. All right. Uh, the most enjoyable game of the night, I think, for baseball fans was at the Boogie Down. Uh, do you think that the performance of the Yankees in their um, series opening win was overshadowed by the performance of the fan base? Yeah, I think it was. I think everybody's focus was on the fans and what they were going to do. I set the over-under at one and a half trash cans, inflatable trash cans being thrown. I don't know if it hit or not. I saw on the broadcast they showed a woman blowing an inflatable trash can up, but I never saw it go on the field. Stop. Rephrase, Your Honor. (laughs) I mean, she was blowing it up. How else am I supposed to say it? Well, you said she was blowing a trash can, which (laughs) actually was – Get your mind out of the gutter, Chris. Hey, dude, did you see the spill that ended up on social media? It was like the scene out of Airplane for anybody that's like over the age of 45. (laughs) I don't know what that is. Okay, great. It's a great movie from 1980. Go watch it. You'll laugh because of what happened last night. So um, you may continue. No, I think that that Yankees fans needed this to get it out of their system. Uh, I think they handled it well. You know, Bregman coming out and hit a homer in the first inning is awesome. That's peak Bregman. I think that was great. And then it was Stanton that answered back, and the place mm-hmm. kind of erupted there. Uh, J- uh, Jake made a good point um, earlier today. He said, you know, obviously not full capacity yet at Yankee Stadium, but he, he said that there was some sort of echo there, like a reverb. So it did sound yeah. really loud. They let Altuve have it the most, but she's man, he's been – I almost feel bad for the guy. You know, if you go back and look at all the stats, there was a guy that charted all the times the trash can bang. Like his is like one of the least. And a lot of his teammates were saying he didn't want it at all. But right. for some reason, people harp on Altuve. Well, and it's because, because he stole it. It's the judge the thing. Was he wearing the shocker to tell him that what too. That, that's why that is. But yeah, you know, I think the fans did a great job. Yes, and in fact, many Yankees, including T.J. LeMahieu, who doesn't really say much, came out and was like, they didn't forget, and it was awesome, and it might have only been 20% capacity, but it sure as hell didn't sound that way. And even Dusty Baker, the Astros manager, who is not a part of this whole debacle, Mm -hmm. came out and said, yeah, they were on top of it tonight. I do – so some interesting stuff. Manny Mass, who works at John Boy Media, came in wearing a Trastros T-shirt. He said on Twitter, and I actually I DM'd him last night. I just wanted to get the story. He said that the Yankee security made him take it off because MLB made a point of it. Apparently, the Astros have been complaining about the treatment they've been receiving on the road. If that is accurate, that the Astros actually complained about it, that's some bullshit. I'm sorry. We're talking about a damn T-shirt. If it, said, if it really said something bad, like, fuck the Astros, I get it. You can't, as a major league team, allow that sort of stuff to be worn in. If it says trash throws on it, that's on you. That's on you. And and I'm 50-50 on, on taking away the trash can stuff because we saw what happened in Anaheim. And we both agreed yesterday we didn't want to see stuff end up on the field. So I get that. But the, even the dude who wanted to wear the, like, the Oscar the Grouch trash can outfit, he went to Yankee Stadium the other day to like do a dry run and say, will I be able to wear this? And they said yes. They changed their policy within the last 48 hours or something. So that guy got screwed. That guy got screwed. And if I were you, I would walk up to Major League Baseball offices with the receipt for your trash can outfit and say, here, you owe me 72 bucks. And the next time you're going to pay 72 bucks for an Oscar the Grouch outfit, you and I have to have a father son talk. Okay, go ahead. I agree because, you know, part of what Rob Manfred said, their punishment punishment would be was like, public humiliation that they were going to have to go through this and all of a sudden they're we're not allowed to publicly shame them like that doesn't make any sense to me i think that is so ridiculous that they would do something that i agree if there were some obscenities on shirts like you don't want that but you know to reference what they actually did this is not like we made anything up this is a proven thing they bang trash cans which i still am in awe of that's how they decided to relay the science because there's a lot of things they could have done they wanted to bang a trash can chris think about that <laughs> think about it man 
you know, like anything else, anything else. They wanted to bang a trash can. Now you can't wear a shirt that says trash shows. A lot of people in the comments saying that's soft. That's, that's charming. Two ply, four ply soft right there. Okay, so let's move on and talk about players who did get suspended, namely Amir Garrett. He is appealing his seven-game suspension he got for yelling at the Cubs after striking out Anthony Rizzo, and then Baez jumps over the rail. He got a small fine for his role in the incident. Were you shocked it was seven games? I was at first, and then I realized he's a repeat offender and stuff like this, so I'm mm -hmm. sure like they just that's what they took into account. You know, like he did the whole thing with the Pirates mm -hmm. and then this, you know, if you read his comments afterwards, he's like, I wasn't going to fight anybody. I was heard by his chirping. So I started chirping and we knew nothing was going to happen. Uh, I think it was not a COVID type thing, which I don't know where we are, you know, in baseball with that. Like, I feel like most teams are at that 85% mark already. So I think they're still taking into account that it's a COVID season and they don't want guys close and, and mingling um like on the field because there wasn't anything really to warrant that um in a regular type situation i mean no punches so were you thrown. surprised though by that number like if, if it had been three i would have been like okay i get it seven's a lot dude seven's a lot but like we talked about he's a reliever so they have to do something he's a reliever and it's a second time offense so i, I think there was you know at first the number did shock me but then you start to think about those things like this is actually going to make him miss some appearances uh, it's going to cost him a little bit more because it's a second time. Oh, I no. think it's, I think it's with the way they're giving suspensions out now, they gave, they gave those two games to Nick Castellanos for, you know, flexing, you know, you have to expect they're, they're going heavy this year. I know, but I don't like it. I don't like it because there's the one thing I've always said is that I need some consistency. You know, this as a parent, if you are not consistent, your kids are going to be all over the place because they don't know where that line is. A Chapman got two games two games for throwing at Mike Brousseau's head. What is worse? What Amir Garrett did or what Aroldis Chapman did? You no. stood in that batter's box. What's worse, Clue? I totally, I totally, totally agree with you on that point. There is no consistency in the punishments that are handed out. I wonder if it's even the same people going over the situations. The only thing, and I, I mentioned this already, I think maybe it's the repeat offender thing. Yeah. Um, but I don't know, man. There is it. I also believe it's the COVID, the COVID situation. So I guess we'll see. All right. A um, couple of uh, pitchers raked last night. So were you more impressed with Dylan Cease of the White Sox starting his career by going three for three as an American League pitcher? Or, you know, and going yah, yah for the second straight time in his second straight start. And this one going 427 feet uh, granny style. First off, shout out Willie in the chat, my boy Willie Calhoun. He wants to come on here one day with us, so maybe we'll have to. What up, Willie? Um, as far as these pitchers, I mean, three for three is is very impressive. I mean, I feel like I haven't looked at the three hits. I'm sure they're probably decently lucky hits. Yes. Um, so I'm gonna go with Yanoa because I watched his granny from last night. The guy's taking hacks up there, dead central. You know, even the way he finishes, his the beginning of his swing looks pitcherish. The finish of his swing looks hitterish. It's impressive to see that. I love when I, I love when I watch a swing and I'm like, okay, like that almost looks like an actual ball player instead of these, yeah. you know, pitchers that look ridiculous. So I'll go. You know, uh, that was a bomb, uh, Granny. That's 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 really cool. And then back to back games. Yeah, first pitcher to do that since Stephen Matz uh, a few years ago. A guy who could rake as well. And I think he's the first Braves pitcher to ever do it in consecutive starts. But I have to go with Dylan Cease because anytime I can bust out the name Boo Ferris, then you win the day. Boo Ferris was the last American League pitcher to start his career by going three for three. Mm. That was in 1945. Okay. Mm-hmm. Don't okay. put it in the chat that I was at the game. I know I'm old, especially for a John Wayne <laughs> employee. Get it, okay? And apparently Cease's hits weren't lucky. He used to be a good hitter back in the day, so I take that back. I'm just saying, you know. Yeah, I watched Genoa no, swing, and it was impressive. It was a little weird. So, all right, last one. We haven't talked much about the Pirates this year, but they have a reliever, Richard Rodriguez, who has been killing it. Slammed the door shut in San Diego last night. He has now thrown a relief pitcher perfect game. He has retired 28 straight batters. Should we be making a bigger deal 
about that. Yeah, yes, yes, one hundred percent. When you're when you're playing a position and you're out there and you bring a reliever in like this, the guy that's just been getting the job done, you are so so happy. And for him to be able to do it, you know. I, I love perfect games. Obviously, that's an incredible feat. But, like, that's that's you having your best on one day and fully mm -hmm. through it. And, like, obviously, that's – I'm not trying to take anything away from a starting pitcher during a perfect game. That's not where I'm going with this. I'm saying for him to be able to go out, you know, however many days in a row – how many appearances is it now? It's been since April 12th. So probably, like, you know, nine appearances, ten appearances, something like that. Yeah. Uh, have your stuff that many times in a row is – incredible because dude, these are major league hitters mm -hmm. they you know they hit man they can hit good pitching when I mean, you can go out there and fool them and, and get 28 straight outs in a row i, I kind of like went and googled some of his appearances the guy is nasty he's kind of got a herky-jerky wind up right. everything's coming at you everything comes out of the same slot a lot of good sliders he can shape it he could add and subtract with it then he's got 94 in the tank with some tail he's been pinpoint it's been crazy impressive to watch. And I bet a lot of teams are going to be looking and saying, hey, can I get that guy on my team? Yeah, so to me, the most impressive two things that are really impressive about this streak. One is he hasn't walked anybody. Yeah. I and mean, how many times have we seen relievers come into the game and all of a sudden they just don't have – you mentioned it. They don't have their control. He hasn't done that. That is amazing. Number two, he is not a huge strikeout guy. or Certainly he hasn't been this year. Okay, it's less than, than – nine Ks per nine. And usually out of the bullpen, you got guys that are fire breathing dragons. And yeah. he, he's not. So that means the other team's putting it in play, but they're not finding holes. They're not finding a lucky hole. They're not getting jammed and one pops over the first baseman's head. None of that has happened with a guy who's allowing them to put it in play. So I've been impressed. You know, good um, for them. And the Pirates haven't sucked nearly as much as I thought they would. No, I actually had him over their win total, so I'm happy the way they're performing. He's only given up two base runners on the year, one walk and one hit, um, and it was eight appearances in a row to get right. a Libra perfect game. Pretty good. It's awesome, man. And like I, I'll say it again, when you're a position player and you and this guy comes in the game, it's such a nice feeling. Okay. Someone that's going to come in, throw strikes, get guys out, get you back uh, on offense. Good, good for him. All right, so you already did talking baseball. Anything else today on the docket? Nothing uh, media-wise. I've uh, got a few errands to run here, some stuff to do around the house. i got my Little League team has practiced tonight. Oh, yes. I'm excited for that. Um, nice. But, yeah, man, just, just uh, chilling. What about you? No, just getting ready for our next um, podcast, which uh, I'll do with class now on Friday. We've got a few special surprises coming the way. And then uh, my freshman, he plays varsity. we got a, we got a game today. Um, I told him, pay attention. I said, are you starting – are you going to play a different position? He said, probably not, because he's a starting pitcher Friday against the mm -hmm. same team. I said, you sit on the bench, you take notes. That's right. I said, don't you don't screw around with your buddies. You watch the game. You watch who's doing what. What are their tendencies? Are they leaning on certain pitches? Are they, you know, pay yeah. attention. This is where he, it starts. He's got to. That's really cool, man. And we're going to be looking for a facility for him, right? We're gonna, I'm, I'm going to put yeah. some calls out today for you. Figure some I appreciate stuff out. it. I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, it, you might need to work with his hitting. It's been a little. Ooh, okay, I can do that. I appreciate that, my man. All right, listen, everybody out there in the John Boy Media Baseball Universe, have a wonderful day. We appreciate your support. It's always a ton of fun to start gabbing in baseball first thing in the morning. Ploof, have a great day, dude. You too, Rosie. All the guys in the chat, see you later. See you tomorrow. Peace.